In this video, I'm going to use the hurricane data to create a few more types of graphs. The first one I want to create is the stem and leaf plot. The stem and leaf plot is kind of a famous one. I mean, it's the one that you might remember doing from either high school or elementary school. And if you go to graph, we can click on stem and leaf. And obviously stem and leaf needs to be, it can only be used to show um, a relationship and show a distribution and, and things like that to present information based on quantitative data. So what I'm going to look at is the stem and leaf for the pressure. So this is the minimum pressure for the hurricane. And it looks like there's two columns here of pressure. There's the minimum pressure that's updated in this second column. The first one was before it was updated. So I'm going to click on the minimum pressure update in 2014. And I'm just going to hit compute. And what we can see here is it tells me what variables being put into the stem and leaf plot. The decimal point is one digit to the right of the colon. So this is saying you have 909. Right? 91 and then there's nothing. There's nothing in the 910s. Um, 922, 920 or 930 and then 930, 31, 34, 37, 38. This is a stem and leaf plot and it allows you to see it's almost like a, if you were to turn this sideways you would see kind of the frequencies those that are in the 940s and the 950s and the 960s and it looks like the most popular column is the 980s. Okay. So this is a stem and leaf plot. I now want to create a time series. And a time series is, you might recognize, it's almost like if you look at a stock chart, where if you look back at a stock and you want to see its price over the last 10 years, on the x-axis is going to be the years, then time. So if you click on graph, this is going to be the index or time plot. And what we want to plot is a particular variable and what I want to plot is the number of deaths. So all the deaths from hurricanes, that's what I want to plot. So if I go down to all deaths and the x-axis format, what do I want to go over by? Do I want to just start at one and go up by ones? Well it turns out I already have a nice column over here on the left hand side. I know the number of deaths per year. So I want the x-axis to be customized and the labels are going to be found in the year column. And that's it. So we want to show over time the relationship with all the deaths from all these hurricanes and we want the x-axis to be taken from the year column. Now if I hit compute, there it is. So you can see as time goes on you can see these spikes. In these years there were the highest number of deaths for those hurricanes and this continues and continues and continues. So this kind of gives you these time series or these index plots allow you to see trends over time. The last one that I want to make is a box plot which you might also know as a box and whisker plot. Box and whisker plots are good, it's also called the five point summary because it allows you to look at not only the median, it shows the median, but it also in that box that it presents gives you an idea of where most of the data is. So if you click on graph and click on box plot, what I want to look at is the variation and the distribution of the that feminine index. So if I click on the MASFEM, that was the feminine index that they used for the hurricane names, and then I'm just going to um, click compute. Here's the box and whisker. Now, we're not going to get too much into this. I wanted to show you because this is usually a, a famous graph that's used in statistics. It turns out that we're not going to be talking about this until a few classes later when we do talk about, actually, I think in the next module where we do talk about the metrics used to describe, such as the median. If you look at this line in the middle of the box, that's going to be the median. 50% of the values are going to be found within this box. Okay. So this kind of gives you an idea here of all the summaries. One, two, three, four, five, the minimum, the maximum. This box gives you a good idea of the various values in this column. That's it for this particular video. Hopefully you kind of have an idea of the power of StackCrunch. We've already seen it can make pie charts and bar graphs. They can make a lot of things and 
this video in particular has hopefully reinforced all the different types of graphs that StatCrunch can make.